a news program from a native perspective. Whether it's a flagpole raising or whether it's an elders conference, if it's important to the people and I make a story out of it, this is the most exciting, wonderful, fun time of my life. Hello and welcome to Heartbeat Alaska. I'm Jeannie Green. Everyone and welcome to Heartbeat Alaska Native News, Native Information. I'm Jeannie Green. Thank you so very much for joining us. Today we have a very special show to bring you. It's all about the Aklutna Child Advocacy Center. The native village of Aklutna lies just outside of Anchorage. There are 250 people that live there. Anchorage is Alaska's largest city with over 250,000 people, yet a handful of people, only about a dozen, and this tribe are making a huge difference in Alaska's and Anchorage's foster care system. I'll be back with the dream of a Klutna right after this. There's a heartbeat, Dad. Bye, Dad. Bye, Junior. From generation to generation, the passing down of tradition has been the native way. You never eat snow because it'll always, it'll get you tired. Survival in the Alaska wilderness depends on one's knowledge of ancient native secrets. Nowadays we carry this. I always carry it next to your body, it's the water. Purity guaranteed. Aquafina. Good morning, Island Air. Island Air has been serving Kodiak Island for over 20 years. With scheduled service and charter service to six different destinations around Kodiak Island, the mainland, peninsula, and up and down the Aleutian chain, Island Air offers quality service at affordable rates. And if you love to fish, Island Air would love to take you there. They offer same day fly-in fishing and bear viewing trips. So when you find yourself on Kodiak Island, be sure to visit Island Air for your island travels. This is a story about the future. Last night I heard the wind come down from a high hill. The future of a group of over 500 Alaska natives. Your time's coming. It's a story about a handful of ordinary people working against impossible odds to do the right thing. It's a story about the dream of one man and the dreams of native children from every corner of Alaska. My mom told me I, I spoke nothing but Indian, the Athabascan, Athabascan language. And when they took me away, I, I lost all contact with my natural relatives. Uh, um, my relatives were looking for me, but um, the welfare said she was adopted out and that's it, we can't give the information out. Ruth Demet lives in this modest house on the north side of Anchorage. She's at a point in her life now where she can look back at what happened to her and realize it doesn't have to be that way. My friend told me, she said, well, you know, Social workers that come in and they, they, they come in and take you, take you away from your mom and dad. And I says, no. And she says, yeah, they'll come and take you away. So I was, I, my mom had dressed me up and um, I kept on asking my mom, why is she coming, you know? And, and she said, oh, she just want to come and visit and see how you're doing. And I still, I had this fear, you know? So anyway, even though I was dressed up and everything, I told mom I was going outside for a minute and I ran away down the highway 
to my girlfriend's place and I was trying to hide there. If you know, I always had a fear of mom either giving me away or mom's gonna leave me or something like that. Ruth's experience is just the tip of the iceberg. There are countless stories of native children taken away from their homes, taken from their villages, and brought to bigger cities like Anchorage. Many of these children grow up not knowing where they came from, not knowing what happened to their families. It's because of these nightmares that the Indian Child Welfare Act of 1978 was passed. Under the uh, Indian Child Welfare Act, we as a, a tribe have a right to stand up for our children and, and our native heritage to help them uh, keep their identity. The Indian Child Welfare Act gives tribal governments a voice in the welfare of a native foster child. Tribal governments can now work to keep native children in their villages, preferably with other family members. If a child can't stay with other family members, then the next best alternative is a native foster home. The law now lets the best interest of the child be the guide for placement. If a non-native family wishes to adopt a native child, the tribal council can work with the state to make sure the placement is in the best interest of the child. This act uh, places native preference for, for both adoption and foster care. And this also gives more, more a determining role in placement for children with the input of the tribes. The act acknowledged and tried to correct many tragedies of the past. It was a complete shift in the way native foster children were dealt with, but it also brought a whole set of problems. We don't have enough native foster homes. And there are more problems that stem both from the state foster care system and the 1978 act. They, they get moved around a lot. Um, and to make sure that children are safe out there, to have homes, have clothes on their back, have a roof over their head, have a warm meal at least once a day um, is important to me. I know that there are a lot of Native children out there who are, who have less than that. Ruth now cares for foster children of her own. She was gracious enough to let Heartbeat Alaska into her home but because of privacy concerns, we cannot show any of her foster children. Her grandson, Adam, however, was more than happy to be on TV. Sometimes she sees the same fear in their eyes that she felt herself as a foster child. There's a social worker that came by to see him, and this little, this little child took one look at the social worker, and he, he got scared, and he just kind of climbed up in my arms. He his little head, his face in my armpit, and he would turn around and look at him. It would be wrong to say that non-native foster homes are not just as loving and just as supportive, but despite all the best intentions, often it just feels like something is missing. Uh, we had a, a man who came to speak to the, um, I think it was the Independent Tribal Council, and he was a psychologist from down in Oregon. He's done a lot of Native studies. And he said it was his thing that we should not worry so much about bonding and removing Native kids to place them from other kinds of homes into Native homes because in the end we're doing them a favor even though at the time it may seem really damaging. And he talked about a family on his caseload where they, he asked the kid, um, what do you want to be when you grow up? And the kid said, I want to be white, just like my parents. You know, it's because um, it kind of go, some children too, they can go into culture shock, you know, going into a different place, strange, some, especially those ones in the villages coming into to the city. Anchorage can be a huge and confusing place for a scared child from a village. And it happens more often than you might think. Well over half the foster children in Anchorage are Native, and there is simply not enough Native foster homes, not even close. When Heartbeat Alaska returns, we'll meet this man and find out why his tribe was willing to take on the problems so many were scared to face, and how their vision is overcoming impossible odds. Stay with us. Come down from a high hill, it has spoke to me. 
Your time's coming. Support for this program provided by Blue Cross Blue Shield of Alaska. We've been here since before Alaska was a state, and we'll be here when you need us. We're here. We're with you. Blue Cross Blue Shield of Alaska. Hi, I'm Mark from Scan Home, and we are proud to sponsor Heartbeat Alaska. Scan Home, serving all of Alaska's home and office furnishing needs. Thank you, Scan Home, for making Heartbeat Alaska possible. Heartbeat Alaska is brought to you in part by Brown's Electric Lighting Gallery. Thank you, Brown's Electric, for your generous support of Heartbeat Alaska. If you want a copy of that, go ahead and grab a copy and attach it back to this and give it back to me. Okay. Lee Stefan is the second chief of the Eklutna tribe. He's the man who saw a problem with his people and took responsibility. Lee Stefan and the seven-member tribal council from the native village of Eklutna are very supportive of our program. Uh, in fact, without uh, Mr. Lee Stefan's vision, which was to open the Eklutna Child Advocacy Center in 1997, that we wouldn't be here. The purpose of the tribal government is to provide for the tribal people, to provide for the people. We saw that uh, long before land claims come along the governments were there, they provided services, everybody was uh, happy. There are about 250 people in Eklutna and over 250,000 in Anchorage. But the tribe doesn't have time to think about the odds. They just have time to do what they can for the native foster children and do it the only way they know. That, uh, the best way to affect change is the tribal governments take on the responsibility. It was his, he's a grandfather now, and I think it was his feeling that a generation of children was escaping in the sense that they weren't being taught the village values and other things. And the tribe's vision is a central place where native foster parents, children, and their biological parents can go to get help and learn the skills they need to make it through this rocky time in their life. Our vision is a, a holistic uh, service system and all tribes uh, will accomplish this eventually. But the minute they walk into our doors, the judge has said, I have to do these certain things. I wish to have them all in the same building. You have to address some mental health issue you have. You have to address some alcoholism you have. You have to address uh, drug addictions, uh, anger management, uh, parenting skills, whatever it is that judge said. In order for you to keep your kids, you gotta do all these things. We are, will have that at our advocacy center. Lee just sort of um, started off, and you have to know Lee, but um, he had this idea, and so he started looking around for some money. To put it together. Now, in the corner of this small office building in downtown Anchorage, the Eklutna Child Advocacy Center works hard to match native foster children with native families. It's not an easy job. Okay. On any given day, our referrals, the calls come in, and we don't have anywhere to, we have nowhere to place these children. Nick Andrew Jr. works in this little office with no windows. He spends most of his day trying to line up native foster families with native children that need a place to stay. Every time he sees his own son, he's reminded of how important his work is. It, it, it gives me a sense of accomplishment. You know, we've, we've had a few cases in the past where the families are reunited. Uh, that's one of our goals here, and that's a good feeling. And when, we're, when a native foster child is placed in a native home, I, we have a, here at the Eklutna the, um, Child Advocacy Center, we have a sense of accomplishment. We try to become a sort of a one-stop Shop. Pat Kennedy is the executive director of the Eklutna Child Advocacy Center. She knows it can be tough to try to deal with the complexity of the Department of Family and Youth Services, or DFYS. DFYS is a state agency in charge of foster care. She tries to work with both the families and DFYS to give the children the best home situation given the circumstances. DFYS only has time to put kids together for one hour with their parents a week and if they're 
their siblings are split up all over town, they don't get to see their siblings often, and we can put them all together here. And we will do the transport, which is a big problem for families that have lost their kids. Sometimes they don't have any income as a result of that. So we're trying to make it um, easier to reunify faster. The Eklutner Child Advocacy Center's mission is to help foster children in Anchorage, but like a single man throwing a stone in a lake, their hard work ripples out across the state. The, the, the village of Eklutna um, has an open arms policy and native, every native tribe from the state of Alaska has benefit, benefited from, the, from our program, which is really impressive. Generosity, it's um, helping uh, your fellow native, and that really spells out the heart. When Heartbeat Alaska returns, we'll meet some of the lives the Eklutna Child Advocacy Center has touched and find out what these kids did last summer. Stay tuned. I listen to the wind, the river through the trees, strange ships, strange ships sailing. If you're interested in becoming a foster parent and you live in the Anchorage area, call the number on the screen. And if you're watching elsewhere, perhaps in a remote village in rural Alaska, call your tribal office. If you can't become a foster parent, would you give a hand to someone that is? I'm sure they'd appreciate the help. I'll be back with more Heartbeat right after this. I know my daughter. She's just like me works for every grade she gets. She thinks I dress like an idiot, and she wishes her chest were bigger. <laughs> she knows people who do drugs. I know she doesn't do them. I know, because I ask. I ask all the time. Sandra and Sheila Blitz may not know the people in the Eklutna Child Advocacy Center that well. But the course of their lives was forever altered by their work. Sandra and Sheila were living in a non-native foster home in Anchorage. When their foster parents decided to move to Texas, Nick Andrew went to work. Rose West Coast, the girl's aunt, wanted to take them in. Working with Nick, she was able to wade through all the paperwork and red tape at DFYS. Nick and Rose also work with the tribe at Good News Bay. Now after school, the girls come home to a peaceful house outside Wasilla. The girls love to care for Buddy, the family's dog. On good days, they'll take him for a run with some help from Larry Jolin, a friend of the family. Good. Get him ahead. The little house in the Get woods is full of life tonight with Rose's brother and his one son visiting from Good News Bay. Oh, <laughs> Living with Rose has allowed the girls to learn more about native life. This summer, the whole family went to fish camp at South Naknek Beach. Yeah, we had to beach comb and gather beech wood for the cabin and for the Smokehouse. They stayed there for two months of hard work Excellent. and learning. The kids had a blast. Learning experience for them and they had fun. And we picked a lot of berries and put up a lot of fish. The girls are already looking forward to next summer. They may not realize it right now, but experiences like these will change the way they look at the world for the rest of their lives. They'll stay with them for a long time and um, if they, they decided to do it in the future, that'll help them a lot. Rose decided a while back to adopt the girls. With help from the Eklutna Child Advocacy Center, she's been working through the adoption process. We had a lot of help from Ikua, the people in Bethel, and I had a lot of help from Nick. Mm -hmm. 
For a child cut off from their village and set adrift in a confusing world, it's easy to get lost. Ruth Devitt was cut off from her family and her village as a child. When Ruth became a mother herself, she was still lost. She hit bottom the day her own daughter became a foster child. 1982, DFYS came in and took my daughter. She was, um, she was two years old and they took her out and they, <clears throat> I sat at home for, th I think, three days on the couch, hardly doing nothing. Just sat in a stupor. I lost my child. I didn't have a life. You know, there's nothing. And so a lady came over and she says, you know, you can get your child back, but you have to go through treatment center. And she said, you, you've got to make a choice between that bottle or a bottle of beer, alcohol, or your child. But she said, two together will not mix. You have to make the choice, one or the other. And I chose my child. Ruth started making big changes in her life that day. The Eklutna Child Advocacy Center works with parents in similar situations. Their goal is to reunify children with their parents. Ruth is still working hard to be a better person and help other people as best she can. I'm I want to help people. This is why I'm here. Um, I want to help the children because I was once a foster child. I also understand the pain and the fear and like total helplessness when what the parents would feel when DFYS or social services are involved with their children. They grab, come in and they take their children away. When Ruth got burned out working as a secretary, the Eklutna Child Advocacy Center was ready to give her life new direction. I wanted to do some work with children, and I needed a job at home. So um, I, was get, I was able to get a hold of um, Nick of the Eklutna Advocacy Center, and he helped me get the paper, fill the papers out. Ruth says raising her grandson Adam and his foster brother isn't always easy, but it is always worthwhile. I feel good about it because I feel like I'm helping, I'm helping the children. I want to make them comfortable. I, I want to make them feel at home. She recognizes the tribe's vision to help the whole state by helping out in her own home. She's seen the effects of her work rippling all across Alaska. This is Grand Central Station. Everybody comes over here and I enjoy it. I get people, um, they come from the, she's come from Barrow. I had my, my cousin come from town across. It's kind of like, um, like the village is coming to your home, you know. Ruth's friend, Jillian Joe, helps her out around the house and lends support. If you're not in a position to become a foster parent yourself, one thing you can do is to help out someone who is. Just little things like making a run to the store or sitting and talking can do wonders for a busy parent. Gillum enjoys being with the kids. He knows that there's ups and downs, but he takes it all in stride. Sometimes they get, they, they wake up wrong side of the bed, but they, they just whine all day long. <laughs> but some days they're good all day. Yeah, it's from morning till bedtime. Rose knows the ups and downs as well. Kids have their problems, you know, growing up as becoming teenagers, but it's it's a, they're fun to have around. It's people like Rose that keep everyone at the Eklutna Child Advocacy Center going. We're opening doors for the Native community. And that's what's most important, is we're making a difference here. The people in this little office think a lot about the difference they make. They go about their work using different methods, but to find success in much the same way. Success is reunification. Um, that's when children that are in state's custody are returned to the biological parents. That is the best feeling, um, the highest success. I have had um, 
one, one success. And basically, success is more or less measured one reunification at a time, one foster home placement at a time. That's my approach. With such a small team facing such a big task, it's easy to get scared and overwhelmed, but the folks working here know a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. Sometimes they say the only thing to do is one step at a time, one step at a time. I'm, I'm more of a day-to-day -day kind of person. Um, what tomorrow brings, I don't know. Yesterday's gone, today I'm working on. So I, I try to keep it simple like that. It's a feeling Ruth knows too, not just as a foster parent, but as a mother who knows she's made mistakes. My heart is with the children and also for the mom and dad, mom or dad. I'm willing to talk with them if they wish to talk to me. Um, and I would like to tell them, yes, it's a possibility to turn around. If we want to improve the health and life of the Alaska Native uh, people, um, allow them to do it the way they know how. Lee knows they've done a lot so far, one step at a time. Lee doesn't expect thanks. He doesn't expect praise for what he does. Lee's not the kind of man to worry a lot about what others think he should do. His vision begins from within. When you look in that mirror, you need to ask yourself, do I like who's looking back at me? Is that person a good person? It doesn't matter how Lee feels about you or anybody else feels about you. It's how you feel about yourself. And um, if you can say, I, I like that person, then uh, the world is your oyster there. Watch the barren trees dance crazy across the moon. And talk to me. Your time's coming. Thank you everyone for joining us for Heartbeat Alaska Native News, Native Information. I'd love to hear from you. Please email me at geniegreen at ak.net and check out our website at geniegreen.com. Join us again next week for more information and exciting news and stories on what's happening in with Alaska Natives and Native Americans. For all of us here, God bless you. We'll see you then. stars you should have had faith in me should have had faith and I heard the stars laughing at the moon you gotta be joking